It's story time. Every night, when the world was cloaked in darkness and the rest of the world slumbered peacefully, I found myself trapped in a haunting realm of sleep paralysis. The experience was unlike any other, a nightmare I couldn't wake from, a terror that gripped my very soul. It would begin with a feeling of unease, like a whispering chill that crept through the room. I'd lie in my bed, paralyzed by the fear of what was to come. It was always the same, a familiar yet chilling routine. My mind would be awake, acutely aware of my surroundings, but my body remained stubbornly asleep. The room was plunged into inky blackness, save for the pale glow of the moon, casting eerie shadows on the walls. It was then that I would feel a presence, an intangible figure lurking. The figure was shrouded in darkness, its form undefined. Yet, I could sense it drawing nearer, an oppressive weight bearing down on my chest, making it difficult to breathe. Panic would begin to seep in, its icy tendrils wrapping around my heart. But I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. I was trapped, a prisoner in my own body. The presence was malevolent, that much was clear. It seemed to feed on my fear, growing stronger with each passing moment. It whispered cruel taunts in a language I couldn't understand, and its breath was cold against my ear. Its fingers, if it had any, would brush against my skin like an ethereal caress, sending shivers down my spine. The room around me would warp and twist, as if I was trapped in some nightmarish funhouse. My bed would become a sarcophagus, the walls closing in on me, suffocating me. I was powerless to escape the endless cycle of terror that gripped me every night. Sometimes I'd see grotesque apparitions. They would materialize at the foot of my bed, their grotesque features contorted into twisted masks of agony and rage. They would reach out with skeletal hands, fingers outstretched, as if they were trying to pull me into their torment. Every time I thought it couldn't get any worse, it did. The sleep paralysis would reach its peak, and I'd be convinced that I was teetering on the edge of madness. I'd fight with all my might to regain control of my body, to wake from the endless nightmare, to be free of the looming malevolence. In those moments, I'd summon every ounce of willpower I possessed, forcing my body to respond. My fingers would twitch, and then, with a Herculean effort, I'd finally break free of the paralysis. Gasping for breath, I'd sit up in bed, sweat soaked and trembling, desperate to leave behind the malevolent presence that had tormented me. It would take me hours to calm my racing heart and regain some semblance of normalcy. I'd leave the lights on, casting away the shadows that seemed to cling to my room. But even with the comforting glow of the lamps, I'd lie in my bed, dreading the next night when the cycle of sleep paralysis and terror would begin anew. I sought the help of sleep specialists and psychiatrists, hoping for an explanation or a solution. They offered theories of sleep disorders and anxiety, but nothing seemed to alleviate the nocturnal torment. I was told that it was all in my head, a product of my own mind's creation, but it felt all too real, too malevolent to be merely a figment of my imagination. As the nights turned into weeks, and the weeks into months, I grew weary and terrified of the nightly ordeal. I was trapped in a never-ending cycle of fear and dread, unable to escape the sleep paralysis and the malevolent presence that haunted my dreams. I tried every remedy, every superstition, every prayer to ward off the malevolence. Nothing worked. It was as if I was doomed to be a prisoner of my own mind, trapped in a waking nightmare every night. The torment continued, relentless and unyielding, until one fateful night when I had a revelation. I realized that the malevolent presence could only have power over me if I allowed it to. With that newfound determination, I resolved to confront my fear, to face the malevolence head on. That night, as the presence began its usual torment, I summoned every ounce of courage within me. 
I closed my eyes, refusing to be a passive victim any longer. I forced myself to confront the malevolence, to call it out, to defy it. I am not afraid of you, I whispered through clenched teeth. You have no power over me. The presence seemed to hesitate, as if taken aback by my newfound resolve. But it did not retreat. Instead, it responded with a guttural growl, a sound that sent shivers down my spine. Undeterred, I continued to challenge the malevolence, repeating my mantra of defiance. It fought back with a final, desperate surge of malevolence, but as I held my ground, it slowly began to recede. The room returned to normal, the malevolent presence dissipating into the shadows. For the first time in what felt like an eternity, I was in control. The next night, I repeated the same ritual, and again, the malevolence retreated. Night after night, I faced my tormentor, and every night, it grew weaker. With each act of defiance, I felt a sense of empowerment that I had never known before. As the weeks passed, the sleep paralysis occurred less frequently, and when it did, I was no longer its helpless victim. I had wrested control of my dreams and my mind from the malevolence that had tormented me for so long. I don't know what the malevolent presence was or why it targeted me, but I do know that I am no longer its prey. It may still lurk in the depths of my mind, waiting for an opportunity to strike, but I am no longer afraid. As a concerned mother, my heart ached every time I heard my young child's cries in the middle of the night. My daughter, a sweet and sensitive girl of seven, had been experiencing distressing episodes of sleep paralysis. Each night, she'd awaken with a terror-filled look in her eyes, gasping for breath and unable to move. It all began innocently enough, or so it seemed. For the first few weeks, we dismissed it as mere nightmares. Children often have vivid dreams and can become frightened, and there's usually nothing more to it. We would comfort her, reassure her that there were no monsters under her bed, and cuddle until she could drift back to sleep. However, as the nights went by, her cries became more frequent, and the intensity of her distress heightened. She'd describe a heavy pressure on her chest, a sensation of being pinned down while she was unable to move, scream, or call for help. She'd often see shadowy figures lurking in the corners of her room, their faces obscured by darkness. Desperate to find a solution, I consulted with my pediatrician, who explained that sleep paralysis is a relatively common phenomenon in children and adults alike. He assured me that my child would outgrow it eventually but I needed to be patient and provide emotional support during these episodes. Still, the helplessness I felt as a parent was overwhelming, and I couldn't simply stand by. My girl's fear grew to the point where he'd refused to go to sleep at all, and it was breaking my heart. She became more and more tired with each passing night, leading to problems at school and a general decline in her physical and emotional well-being. It was a vicious cycle, and it had to stop. I began researching sleep disorders and reaching out to support groups online, hoping to find advice from parents who had been through similar experiences. Their stories were heartbreaking, filled with frustration, and the overwhelming desire to help their children. One particular account caught my eye. A mother who had discovered her child's sleep paralysis was triggered by an old antique mirror in their home. Curiosity peaked, I decided to investigate whether there could be any environmental factors contributing to my daughter's condition. Our home was a relatively new build, and nothing stood out as an obvious source of his sleep paralysis. However, a piece of furniture did stand out a family heirloom passed down through generations, an antique oak wardrobe. It was a beautiful yet eerie piece, with ornate carvings and beveled mirrors. It had always resided in my daughter's room, but we hadn't paid it much attention. One evening, as I entered my daughter's room, I noticed her sitting on the edge of her bed, 
eyes fixed on the wardrobe. I asked what was bothering her, and she replied with a trembling voice, Mom, I don't like that mirror. It feels like something's watching me. Those words sent shivers down my spine, confirming my suspicion that the wardrobe could somehow be connected to her sleep paralysis. The following day, I removed the wardrobe from my room and placed it in our garage, out of her sight. For the first time in weeks, my daughter entered her room with a tentative smile on her face. We painted the room with warm, calming colors, hung up her favorite posters, and even got her a nightlight to chase away the shadows. The change was remarkable. Her sleep paralysis episodes gradually became less frequent and less severe. The oppressive feeling on her chest began to wane, and she reported fewer encounters with the shadowy figures. Her newfound sense of security seemed to dispel the malevolent presence that had haunted her for so long. Though she still struggled with the occasional episode, they no longer dominated her nights. She was able to sleep soundly for the first time in what felt like an eternity. With each passing day, her fear diminished, and she regained the strength to face her nights with bravery. Every night when I lay my head down to sleep, I know that what awaits me is a nightmarish ordeal that defies explanation. I suffer from severe sleep paralysis, a condition that traps me in the fragile space between wakefulness and dreams where my mind is fully aware, but my body remains paralyzed. This alone would be terrifying enough, but it's only the beginning of the horrors that plague my nights. The ordeal begins when I close my eyes, a ritual that fills me with dread as the darkness ushers in the impending doom. It's like clockwork. The moment I drift into slumber, I can sense the eerie sensation creeping over me, wrapping its suffocating tendrils around my body. I can't move. I can't scream. My eyes are open, but I'm powerless to escape the shadows that haunt me. I'm conscious of every creak, every whisper, every murmur of the night. The darkness plays tricks on my mind, conjuring ghastly apparitions that appear at the corners of my room. They hover like silent wraiths, their eyes gleaming with malevolence. Their gaunt faces, twisted and contorted in torment, gaze upon me with an intensity that curdles my blood. They reach out, their spectral hands inching closer with each agonizing second. As I lie frozen, my heart pounding, unable to resist the impending encounter. My room transforms into a grotesque theater of the macabre, and I'm forced to watch a sinister play, starring myself as the captive audience. The shadows warp and twist, forming grotesque shapes on the walls. Malevolent whispers, barely audible, slither into my ears, carrying messages of despair and dread. They whisper secrets I was never meant to hear, unveil horrors I was never meant to witness. The darkness isn't content with mere apparitions. It carries with it the weight of the dead. My sleep paralysis reveals the departed souls that linger in my presence. I see them, hear them, and feel their presence as they traverse the boundary between the living and the dead. They float above my bed, their visages marked by anguish, yearning, and a longing that chills me to the core. One night, I encountered a ghostly child with hollow eyes, pleading for something I could not comprehend. She whispered words that were barely discernible, her voice quivering with an indescribable sorrow. Another night, a soldier from an era long past materialized at the foot of my bed, still clad in his tattered uniform. His spectral eyes, filled with unspoken horrors, fixed upon me with a sorrowful intensity. Every night, I am confronted by a parade of restless spirits, each with its own story. The sleep paralysis offers them a doorway into my reality, a brief connection between worlds that I can neither control nor escape. These nightly encounters blur the lines between my dreams and my waking life, leaving me in a state of perpetual dread. I've sought help from countless doctors and sleep specialists, 
all of whom offer the same clinical explanations and ineffective treatments. Medications only deepen the chasm between sleep and wakefulness, plunging me into an abyss of nightmares from which I cannot escape. Therapy provides no solace, as the enigmatic nature of my condition defies comprehension. As I lie there, a prisoner in my own body, my only hope is that the night will end, that the paralysis will release its grasp, and that I will awaken from the malevolent dreamscape that haunts me. But it never comes easily. Each second of struggle feels like an eternity. Eventually, the darkness recedes, and I regain control over my body, but I am left with a gnawing fear that these nightly horrors will never truly be behind me. I live in perpetual terror, fearful of the impending nightfall and the return of the paralysis and the apparitions. I can only hope that someday, somehow, the curse that has haunted me for so long will be lifted and I will find reprieve from the darkness that threatens to engulf me entirely. Until then, I remain a captive of the night, a witness to horrors beyond imagination and a victim of my own terrifying existence.